Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nali again. Um, this is the last series of the video on redox reaction and also the um, last video on chapter 4 where we talk about types of reaction. And in this video I just want to talk about one concept that's important for redox reaction which is balancing equations. So in um, you learn how to balance chemical equations in the previous chapter, in chapter 3, when we're dealing with reactions, they're fairly easy to balance usually. Some of them are um, acid-based reactions, some of them are precipitation reactions, some of them are redox reactions, but those redox reactions happen to be uh, the type that's fairly easy to balance. You can see what happens to the elements pretty clearly and there's no additional components there. However, there are uh, as you'll see, um, there's a lot of redox reactions where ions are involved in the reaction and elements on the other side. So in other words, you have uh, species with different charges involved. So in, in, in one case you have an element, in the other case you have an ion, and vice versa on the product side. When you have this type of redox reactions, then it becomes difficult to just balance the equation because you think, for example, this reaction Cu plus Ag goes to Cu plus Ag. If you just look from the perspective of atoms, you might think that this reaction is already balanced. But in fact, it's not balanced because the charges here are not balanced. In other words, the number of electrons are not balanced. And this is something we refer to as conservation of charge. And you remember that in um, normal balancing we talk about conservation of the elements, conservation of the atoms because the masses have to be conserved but if you think about it, if masses have to be conserved then not only do the elements have to be conserved, the atoms, but also the ions and the electrons have to be conserved. You can't just conserve um, some particles, you have to conserve all types of particles. Okay, So if you think about this equation, again I'm going to write it in the uh, an, another page now Think about what exactly is going on with this equation. Okay, so here's the equation that we just talked about, right? It's this equation between Cu and Ag uh, ion going to Cu ion and Ag. If you work through the oxidation number, you'll see that, and we talked about the oxidation number in the previous video, but if you work through oxidation number, you see that the oxidation number of copper here is zero. Oxidation number of um, silver ion here is plus one, oxidation number of copper ion here is plus two, and oxidation number of um, the uh, silver ion, I mean silver metal, I'm sorry, is uh, zero, okay? So then what happens is, of course, you notice that this particular species, copper metal, is oxidized to copper ion, and then vice versa, the um, silver ion is actually reduced to silver metal, okay? So there is an imbalance in the number of electrons because copper, uh, in this case, loses two electron. Okay, copper loses two electron, right, to become copper two plus, and silver um, only gains one electron to become silver zero. So in order to balance this out, we have to make sure that the silver gains the same number of electrons as the copper is losing it. So in other words, you have to conserve the charges. In order to make that happen, you have to make sure that there is two silver, right, um, that is going, you know, from the plus state to the zero state. So then this one also, of course, has to have zero. So once you do this, then the equation is balanced from both the perspective of elements, because you have one copper on both sides, two silvers on both sides, but also the electrons are balanced because now copper is, uh, has lost two electrons to make uh, copper plus two, but each silver here has gained one electron, but since there's two silver, that means the silver has gained two electrons in total. So then both the charges are also conserved. So that's the concept that we'll use to balance redox equation. Uh, you have to consider both the element uh, to be balanced, but you also have to consider that the charges have to be balanced. Okay, so so this is the you know kind of the bottom part of this slide that, that discusses the uh, ideas that I just talked about uh, that I was writing out on this slide earlier. Now again, what we want to be able to do is for redox reactions in general, <clears throat> you have to check not only the elements 
but you also have to check the charges. So we're going to apply that concept in this reaction here, which is a redox reaction. Uh, and you have solid lead oxide, lead 2 oxide, and ammonia gas, and that produces nitrogen, liquid water, and solid lead. And what we want to be able to do here is basically think about how we can balance this reaction uh, by considering both uh, conservation of atoms as well as conservation of charges. Okay, so this is the question that we have earlier. Let's just kind of work through it um, to see how, you know, how we can solve this balancing uh, equation. Again, we're going to start with just writing the reaction. We have in this case lead uh, 2 oxide, which should have this formula, right? And then ammonia, which is this formula, that forms nitrogen gas. Remember, nitrogen is one of those diatomic gases, so it's that formula and then liquid water which is just H2O and then we have solid lead that's just the elemental lead so it's just PB okay now again if you know you might just think that you can go ahead and balance this uh, equation without uh, thinking about uh, how you can um, you know considering charges but generally if you have a redox reaction you want to be a little careful because a lot of times when you have a redox reaction, then it's actually uh, pretty important to take a look and make sure that your um, charges are also balanced, okay? So in this case, we would first make sure that it's a redox reaction, and we can do that by checking oxidation numbers. If ox ox oxidation numbers of all the elements stay exactly the same before and after reaction, then we know it's not a redox reaction, but if there's some of the elements that change oxidation numbers, then we know it's a redox reaction. So if we look here, uh, remember that oxida uh, oxygen, I'm sorry, is negative 2, then that makes lead positive 2 in this case, okay? And then hydrogen, remember, is plus 1, um, and then because there's 3 of it, it makes plus 3, which means my nitrogen here is negative 3, okay? And then I have nitrogen elemental, which is just 0, uh, hydrogen is plus 1, and there's two of it, so then uh, oxygen has to be negative two, and then lead is zero because it's elemental here, okay? And as you can see, there's clearly some uh, of these elements that changes oxidation number. First is obviously my lead here. You can see that it goes from um, plus two to zero. That means it's going down in oxidation number, which means it's been reduced. Been reduced, that means it gains electron, right? gain two electrons. That's the lead, right? That's what happens to the lead here, okay? Um, I can, here, let me use another color to um, highlight what happens to another species. If you look, uh, oxygen actually stays the same, negative two and negative two, right? So there's nothing, no change there. Hydrogen positive one, positive one, no change. But the nitrogen, there's clearly a change there, okay? So nitrogen goes from uh, here, this one here, went too far there. Uh, it goes from negative 3 to 0, so then that means that it's loss, it's oxidized, right? It goes from a smaller number to a bigger number, so it's oxidized, and that means that it's uh, gaining in this case, I mean, it's losing in this case, lose uh, 3 electron, okay? So that's kind of the way you, you want to think about it. Uh, so your lead has a gain of two electrons, your nitrogen has a loss of uh, three electrons. So then the way you want to balance it out, then you want to think about, well, how do I balance those electrons uh, gains and loss? Because I have to make sure that they're the same. Well, if somebody is gaining through and the other one is losing three, they're not the same, but I can make them the same by multiplying what? Multiplying the top one by two and multiplying the bottom one by three, okay? And that's what I'll do with this equation. I'm going to just do that. So everything that contains lead, I'm going to multiply by 3. Everything that contains uh, nitrogen, uh, right, I'm going to multiply by 2 to make sure that the charges are balanced, and then the elements will then be balanced as well. Uh, so let's check that out. If we do that, we get 3 PBO, right? So that's the first one. Nitrogen, remember, I'm going to multiply by 2. So that gives me that. 
And then N2, well, it's already 2, so then we don't need to do anything anymore. There's already two nitrogen, so the nitrogen loses three electrons each. Um, and there's two of them, so that's fine. It's already balanced. H2O, we'll worry about it a little bit. And then we have PB, and again, we have three PBs on the left side, so we want to make sure that we also have three PBs on the right side, okay? And once you balance, now the charges are balanced, okay? So if you calculate charges, you should see that the charges are now balanced uh, because we made sure that it's balanced by our uh, multiplication. The rest is just kind of figuring out exactly what's going on with the uh, rest of the equation that's not yet balanced. If you notice, the oxygen is 3 on the uh, left side, but it's only 1 on the right side, so we need to balance that out. We can multiply this by 3. And then the last uh, element that we haven't checked is the hydrogen. You notice the hydrogen here is 2 times 3, which is 6. And of course, on the right side is 3 times 2, which is 6. So then uh, everything is balanced at this point. Everything's balanced. Okay? So that's really how you use this concept of charge balance to help you uh, balance out redox equations. Okay? And we'll get a couple more examples in, you know, in class to kind of work through. Uh, these balancing so you really can see how you can apply the concept of both balancing just elements as well as uh, charges to make sure that um, uh, the redox equation is really balanced okay all right